Hi, in today's video we're going to take a look at low latency video streaming using SRT and OBS Studio. So what you can see in front of you is OBS Studio running on Ubuntu 24.10 and I'm not recording the video on the machine, I'm actually streaming this desktop to another machine on the local network and recording it on that machine. So what I'm going to do is actually just show you the latency so here, here's me switching to Emacs, to the terminal, pulling up to the overview, switching back to the terminal, and let's type some text. So this is me typing some text at a really, how do you spell awkward? Awkward <laughs> angle. Okay, so that's not here spelled awkward. But let's delete the text, double D. You can see it's deleted. I switch back to OBS Studio. So there's very little latency between these two machines as I'm switching across. So there's Emacs. Pull up to the overview. Switch back down. Okay, so that's streaming the desktop of Ubuntu to another machine to record on. So let's go through and have a look at how we get this set up. So I'm going to switch across here to the laptop. Just going to turn that stream off. And I don't need OBS running here anymore, so I'm just going to move this computer out of the way. Okay. So let's have some tea and crack on. So what we're going to do is actually have a look at how you get this set up and working on both machines. So hang on a sec. Right. So what we have here is a couple of bits of things you need to get set up to get this working. So first of all, what we have is the what's called the OBS listener. So this is the receiving machine on the network. And the reason why you might want to do this is because, uh, for example, the uh, machine I'm running Ubuntu 24.10 on is an old MacBook Pro Retina 2015 that doesn't have a GPU. Now you can enable VAPI encoding um, by installing a package, but I have a Dell XPS 15 um, with a NVIDIA GPU that's better to record on. So that's why I'm sending the stream from Ubuntu to the other machine to record on. So let's have a look at how we get this set up. So this is the listener. So the first thing that we actually want to do is go into the OBS Studio settings and come across to the Advanced tab. And what you want to do is actually scroll down to the Network section and you'll, two, and you'll see two options down here. IP family, and what you want to do is change that to IPv4 only. Uh, by default, it's set to listen on IPv, IPv4 and IPv6. So we're just going to set it to listen to IPv4 only. And then in the next section, what you'll see is bind to IP address or bind to IP. And what you want to do is set this to your LAN IP address so that other computers on the network can actually find the computer. So by default, um, it's, I think it may only listen on local host. So you need to select your LAN IP um, so that the machine listening for the stream is accessible to other machines on the network. So that's going into the settings, advanced, network, changing the IP family to IPv4 only, and bind to IP to your LAN IP. The next step is actually setting up a media source in OBS Studio. Now I've got the bit of code here in, in the next slide, so don't squint too much. But basically what you do is you add a media source, and what you do is you un um, untick local file, this fucking pop up. Okay, so untick local file, set network buffering to zero, and then in the input, what we're going to do is add some code that I'll go through in the next slide that's easier to read. Um, 
the input format to MPEG TS, use hardware decoding when available, show nothing when playback ends, and closed file when inactive. So those are the settings that you want to use, and I'm going to show you the code that we're going to use to receive the stream. So what we have here is the code that actually goes in the media source. So remember, let me switch back. We You untick local file, and in the input, you're going to add this bit of code. So what we have here is the receiving code for the SRT stream. And I'm going to take you through the options that we've got in here. So first of all, what you'll see is SRT colon slash slash and then the IP address. So this is the IP address of the listening machine on the network. OK, so replace that with your IP address um, of your machine. Then we have colon and then a port. And what this is, is this is a UDP port that I have opened in my firewall. So it needs to be a UDP port and not TCP because I believe SRT works over the UDP protocol, which enables it to be uh, significantly, significantly faster than using a TCP connection. So that's the first bit, SRT colon slash slash, the IP address of the listening machine um, running OBS Studio on your network, and then the port that is open on that machine, which has to be a UDP port. We then have question mark mode equals listener. And what this actually does is this will actually listen, this will actually listen on that particular port when OBS Studio is open for incoming streams. So we have mode equals listener. And then we have latency equals, and what I've done is set this to a thousand. There's a lot of guys out there saying this should be four times the uh, value of your ping level. But what I found is um, some people recommend setting it at 10,000 or higher. But what happens is when you actually start the stream, there is a five to 10 second delay in actually receiving the stream if the latency is set to something like 10,000 or above. By setting it to 1,000, um, the stream kicks in in you know, like less than a second or so. So that's the first thing you want to do is set the latency so that it's about 1,000. And then we have timeout, and I believe that is um, a value for how long it's going to listen for the stream before it actually times out. So that's the media source that's actually going to receive the SRT stream on the listening machine. So next, what we have is what's called the OBS caller. So this is the SRT caller. So what we're going to do is come across to the streaming tab. So open the OBS Studio settings and come across to the streaming tab. And what you'll see here is we've got service set to custom and then server. And this is the same IP address and port of the listening machine. So we have SRT colon slash slash um, the LAN IP address of the listening OBS machine. The port, again, um, in my example, I'm using 6882, which has to be open in the UDP port. Then we have question mode equals caller, which is actually the default value. So you can admit that, but I'm putting it in so that you can actually tell the difference between the two. Um, so we have mode equals caller, timeout equals, uh, I think that was 50,000, and trans type equals live. So we don't actually need to set the latency on this one um, on the caller because it's going to use the latency value that we've specified on the listener. So what I'm going to do is switch to the next slide where I think I've got that bit of code. Yeah. So there's a bit of code. Uh, that I've just shown you in the previous slide, just a bit easier to read. So again, SRT colon slash slash LAN IP port mode equals caller and timeout and trans type is live. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is go to the output streaming tab. Now, I should mention at this point, there's actually two ways you can do 
the streaming. You can actually use the streaming tab or the recording tab, and I'm going to explain the difference between the two. So, what you'll see here, this is the settings on Ubuntu 24.10 on the MacBook Pro Retina 2015, which has Intel, Intel graphics, but it doesn't have a GPU. And what you can do is there's a package that the name of me uh, escapes me for the moment, um, and I have to put a link in when I remember it. But once you install this package, um, things like Intel, VAPI, non-free or something like that, um, it will allow you to use FFmpeg VAPI H.264 encoding on the machine. The reason why that's important is because by default, without that package installed, you will only be able to capture a much smaller screen size. Um, when you run the wizard, it will come up and say, you know, capturing the screen size of like 800 by 600 or something like that. If you actually install um, the, I believe it's Intel non-free VAPI or something like that, what it will allow you to do is actually record at 1920 um, by 1080. And what you can see in this screenshot um, here is we've got the video encoder AAC, video encoder VAPI. And what you'll see here is a VAPI device profile level rate control. And there's other stuff as well uh, that's not relevant at the moment. But the issue is um, that's the streaming tab. You can actually also use the recording tab and set a custom FFmpeg output. And you can actually choose the VAPI encoder. You can, um, there's a section where it says um, list all available codecs, even if incompatible. And once you select and um, check that checkbox, you, you get a long list of um, video encoders you can choose from. And VAPI is actually listed there but it won't work because there is actually a difference between the streaming tabs and, and the recording tabs. And this applies to MVENC as well, um, that these extra encoding set, um, settings here only show up in the streaming tab and not in the recording tab if you're using custom FFmpeg command. So that's why I would actually recommend using the streaming tab um, as opposed to going down the recording route um, if you've actually got uh, VAPI or MVENC enabled on the calling machine. So that's just explaining the difference between the streaming and the recording side of things.